Hi, everybody. My name is Christian Zaharia. I'm very glad to be here with you and to share some interesting things from my experience. It's very nice to be here. You should try it, too. So, as I said, my name is Christian. I work for Dell SecureWorks for more than one year. Um, I'm the team lead for one of our uh, big customers from the United States. And um, we, it's very, uh, I'm leading an eight members team of information security analysts. And uh, our, uh, we, are, we are securing the, a very wide environment with more than two, 200,000 devices, users. And so it's very, very challenging. Uh, before that, I worked for more than five years for the National Police Force. And um, I think some of you already know me from very early hours in the morning, knocking on your door. Don't blame me, blame the system. Um, I was part of a big team with the FBI in a task force office, working together in joint cases. And uh, it was a very interesting experience. So for the today presentation, I will um, talk about social engineering. I'm sure that most of you already know what this means. That's why, that's why I don't want to uh, bore, bore you talking about some technical things about that. And uh, because one, an image or a movie could uh, explain more than 1,000 words, I will uh, present you a movie about that. This one, wait a second. Yeah, I think some of you already already seen it, but it's a very interesting movie about that. And after that, I will talk about social engineering. So I invited a few of the world's best hackers to try to hack me and show me where my vulnerabilities are. And now I'm going to meet them in Las Vegas for DEF CON, the biggest hacker convention of the year. They're going to help me using social engineering, which is essentially hacking without any code. They just use a phone and an internet connection. Do you want to do a sample of phishing call? What's phishing? Phishing is voice solicitation. And basically um, what you do is you use the phone to extract information or data points that can be used in a later attack. Let's do it. Will okay. you, who are you going to call? Maybe I'll call your cell phone provider. Okay. See if I can get them to give me your email address. I, I bet they're good. I bet they have my back. <laughs> but yeah, go go for it. I'm going to spoof from your number, so it's going to look like it's calling from you. OK. Hi. I'm actually, I'm so sorry. Can you hear me OK? I, my baby, I'm sorry. <laughs> my. <laughs> my husband's like, we're about to apply for a loan, and we just had a baby, and he's like, get this done by today, so I'm so sorry, I can't I, um, call you back. <laughs> I'm trying to log into our account for uses information, and I can't remember what email address we use to log the account. The baby's crying, and um, can, can you help me? Awesome. In just 30 seconds, at email .com. Jessica gets access to my personal email address. Now, if I needed to um, add our older daughter on our account so she could call in and make changes, how would I need to go about doing that? You would have to send me a secure pin through a text message? Yeah. Well, the thing is, I don't think I'll be able to receive a text message if I'm on the phone. Oh, I'm not on there either? I, so I thought when we got married, uh, he added me to the account. Jess uses my girlfriend's name and a fake social security number 5127 to set up her own personal access to my account. Wait, I'm sorry, so there's no password on my account right now? Can I set that up? She even gets the support person to change my password. Thank you so much for your help today. So she just basically blocked me out of my own account. I'll get her fed off of this. <laughs> All right, thank you. Holy shit. So they they just gave they just gave you access to my entire cell phone account. You're gonna have to go on and change your password now because it's Jess, my name. And all it took was a crying baby and a phone call. Yes. So yeah, simple as that. Nope. So I invited a few of the world's best. Nope. Yeah. So. I hope there's not. I hope we don't have any person in the room who's who's who can 
<laughs> who is this guy because I think you should know what social engineering means and protect yourself against this attack because I don't want to ask for a poll in the room and uh, asking you to raise the, the hands if you thought you were the victim of a social engineering because if you don't raise the hand, I'm sure you're lying or you, you didn't know that. I'm sure you are, you, all of you were some, sometimes in the past were the victim, or not the victim, the target of a social engineering. Uh, I hope not the victim. So why social engineering is very, very efficient? Because a lot of, a lot of people from, from here are, are tech people that are very techy. They know how to protect a system, to protect a network, an environment. And we have all the layers for, from the TCP IP uh, model, OSI model, with, uh, and we have different uh, security models applied for, each, for every each layer. But something is missing here, and uh, and we will always will always miss, I th unfortunately. And this is the human factor, because it, as I said here, it doesn't matter how much money you've invested in security, if you can trick the sysadmin or an important person to give you access in your account, it doesn't matter how much money you've invested, because. In social engineering, the key factor is psychology. You don't, you don't, you don't need to be very, very technical to be a technical person. And you will see a, a case a few slides ahead. If you know how people react, if you know how people think, it will be very, very easy to to gain not only an authorized access but money and everything else you want. Why we are vulnerable? I think it's in the human nature. First case, our desire to be helpful. I think it's in our nature to help. I know, maybe because sometimes in, in life we, we also need to be helped and we like to, to give help to receive uh, this thing. Uh, our tendency to trust people we don't know is very related to the first case. Our fear of getting into trouble. Yeah, we, we don't like to, to get out of our comfort zone. If, if we are good the way we are, okay. I don't want to change something. If I receive an email that is, uh, says that my account, my bank account will expire if I don't update my my personal information, yeah, maybe if I'm not, I'm not, uh, I don't know how things things work with the social engineering. Maybe I could, I can, I could say, okay, I don't want to get my account blocked, my bank account blocked because. Last last year, I I didn't pay my internet bill and they I spent two months to regain it. So I, I don't want to, to have trouble. And you, may, you will be tend to, to click on that link. And it was a malicious link. Also, the respect for authority. And I think here I have a good example. And maybe or some, someone from the room already know about the Romanian police virus. It was very, very broadcasted on the TV stations. When your computer displayed an uh, image, hey, uh, we, are, we are from the Romanian police, uh, you access some forbidden websites and uh, that's why you need to pay some money to regain your access to your computer. And uh, I remember when I worked in police, I had a lot of people who, were came, who were, uh, came to me and asked, hey, I, uh, hey, hello, are you, are you from the police? Yeah, okay, I, I, give you the, I give you the money, now give me the access. Some of them were very, very angry. They called me on the on the public phone, and they they were very, hey, you are paid from my my money. Now you ask me for more money? Give me access. So it was very hard to explain them explain them that hey, this is a scam. You, you didn't you you pay the money to the wrong person. Yeah, uh, and the cognitive biases. Maybe this is the uh, the, the expression is a little bit tricky, but. Uh, is really related to our comfort zone also because in 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 life if you are very uh, used with some situations if you make some uh, uh, statement about something and you have some experience about that you, you thought that everything all other experiences will be the same as you had in the past uh, if as i said if you if someone seems kind and generous perhaps one might believe that they are also intelligent and honest because you you've met a lot of person who were kind and generous, and they were also intelligent and honest, you, you will say, okay, all the persons who are kind and generous are also intelligent and honest, and you don't see what's behind this mask. 
a uh, couple of things about social engineering. From my experience, I could, I could say that there are three main categories. The first one, hum exploiting human weakness, involves direct contact with the victim, as you, you've seen in the previous movie. So you have you use your skills, your pers persuasion skills, to to, to 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 scam someone and make him uh, react as you want, or if you can, how he wants. Uh, negligence exploiting that means you don't have a direct contact with the person, but you have some life experience and you know how things work. And uh, for example, the, for authentication vulnerabilities, one good example would be the security questions. You, you, you know that it's very, very easy to guess them. So uh, you, don't ha you don't have to contact the victim to ask him for the question. It's, it's very simple just to look, him, look to, to him to his email account to, or not to, to his Facebook account and see that uh, he has a lot of pictures with him on the stadium, so, so, uh, supporting uh, his favorite team. And if, if his security question is, "Was the your favorite team?" It, it would be very, very easy to to guess the answer. Or dumpster diving. I remember it was a case in uh, in the Romania a couple of years ago, where uh, uh, when a public institution who had access to our data uh, threw away their dra their documentation drafts to the public being in the front of the, the, the building and the journalists came and uh, had access to a lot of important information because the authorities didn't, didn't uh, handle this the way they should. Do. And the, the last uh, category, computer-based social engineering, is more sophisticated. It implies phishing attacks where you don't have a specific target, you don't have a specific group, you just, you just send hundreds, thousands of emails, uh, phishing emails, and see what, what you can have. Uh, this is a funny case. The first well-known case of, of social engineering, in my opinion, was the Trojan horse. As you see, a little guy uh, said surprise a little bit earlier than he, he need. OK, so the purpose of social engineering, there are a lot of, a lot of uh, Things about that, gain authorized access to system information, fraud, industrial espionage, disrupt the system or net, uh, the system or network identity theft. I will uh, give you some examples for most of these cases a little bit uh, later. Yeah, a theory in practice, because uh, we also have some, some examples, good examples in Romania. For example, car accident method, I think, uh, most of you heard about it, heard about it when some of your uh, parents, uh, friends, or even you received a call that, uh, hey, your parent, your gra grandmother, or your uh, sister, brother, uh, hit, uh, hit, uh, had an accident with a car and he hit someone, and I'm his lawyer, and uh, he's a big, big trouble. If you send me a, a small amount of money, I will, I could arrange to, to not to escape, but to make him his situation uh, easier to to support. And it was very, very efficient, and I think it it still is because uh, the, a lot of people are scammed with this case. Also, a very, very well-known case, online fraud cases. Uh, I think all of you heard about Hackerville, uh, which is the room Niko Vulcha and Alexandria. I don't know where is the hacker in this scheme, because they are not hackers, they are, they are thieves. It doesn't matter. Uh, but it, they were very, very efficient. And uh, they stole million and million of do dollars, and that's why we have a big presence in here in Romania of the FBI and all the three letters institutions from the US because of them. Yeah. And the last uh, example, the seedful commercial transaction. I handle some of these situations. It's uh, quite recent. Uh, when it, 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 you need to, the attacker needs to know uh, some technical information because first of all, you need to intercept the communication between two parties and uh, you change the you you see what they what uh, what emails they have and what emails they use and you change a letter in that email and uh, when one party send a swift a bank swift for example to another you 
you download that Swift, change the bank account, and send send an email to the second party that, hey, I have a problem with my, my bank account. Now, this is my new bank account. Send me the money in this account. And the victim didn't see that uh, just a small I letter changed in his email account, and uh, he sent the money to the wrong bank account. And it was very, very efficient. I think last August, or yeah, last August this summer, a company from uh, Nantes County sent $40 million to another bank account to a uh, yeah, and, and I, I don't know if they will ever have this money back. And now, a big case I will present you is from zero to hero, how to be famous with zero IT knowledge. Because imagine yourself that you are an employer, an employer, uh, poor and an, an unemployer in a village somewhere in the western uh, Romania, and uh, you 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 don't have a specific skill you don't have money you don't have a job a proper job but you know that you like the late night shows and you like the nice girls dancing around and you want to to see this world and to hear news from this world from inside so yeah this is me in 2011 with this little guy it was a very very uh, known case that time. It was about the Mikul Fum or Little Smoke. Uh, he he was not. I I can't even uh, say that he was a script kiddies because script script kiddies are very very te uh, te uh, te than this guy. Uh, the only thing he used in his activity was the some free proxy working pro public proxies. Which, which was hide my ass, yeah. And uh, after he he grabbed a uh, public IP proxy to hide his private IP, he checked his his IP with IP chicken. It was, yeah. The names are also funny, but the main ingredient in this case it was there were two main ingredients: the perseverance and and patience. Because when I did the the forensic on his device, he was very 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 well organized. Uh, he had a, a folder for each victim, and each folder had uh, a, a lot of information about that victim. And uh, he, as I said earlier, he exploit, exploited a vulnerability in one of, uh, of the authentication methods for Yahoo or Gmail. And uh, this was the security question. So, for example, um, if he, he chose a victim and then it was very hard for him at the beginning to have one email address of, of a celebrity. And after that, uh, after he hacked this email address, then he had access to the contact list of that person. And from that, per from that contact list, he had another uh, interesting email addresses to hack, so on and so forth. So uh, after he had an email address and he tried to, to hack this email address, he hid the, I don't know my password, give me the security question. And he, when he, he saw the security question, he tried a, all the combination. He, he, he had a lot of free time and he tried, and he knew, for example, he was very smart because he knew that at that time, Yahoo had an account lockout policy, and I think it was 10 times. And uh, when uh, you try 10 times in less than 12 hours, the victim would receive uh, uh, something, that an email that, hey, your account is trying to be hacked, please change your pass password or something like that. And he knew that. So for, in, in this, uh, in, for, for each victim, he tried, for example, what was uh, your, uh, what was the town when you spent your honeymoon? Okay, uh, you, you would say oh, there are a lot of combination here. Yeah, but we have, I don't know, let, let's say 50 big, uh, interesting uh, vacation location in the world. I don't think you would try uh, some city from Syria or Iraq. You would, and he tried, for example, he began to eat Madrid, per Paris, Miami. And I assure you that someone, sometime, he will, he will uh, hit the, the correct answer. And that's the way he did. Yeah, and uh, I, I would say that this is the, the second case, but it's very, very related with the first one, and it's much more uh, no, well-known. 
Because when social engineering th th flows through your veins and you have attitude in your blood, yeah, you have this deja vu uh, image. Is the same guy three years later, but on a higher uh, class right now. Uh, I think you already know about this case, most of you. As I said, he didn't use some fancy equipment. The whole mass, mass, mass media from Romania and the America and from the whole world uh, say that he's a very, very good hacker. I didn't call him a hacker, but yeah, doesn't mind. Uh, it's just a good, a very good social engineering, social, social engineer. Consequences of his actions, I don't know if it worth it. He, yeah, he received worldwide recognition, but he also received seven years in prison in Romania and another four years in the United States. I don't know if it worth to stay 11 years in prison for that. I don't know. But most important, and I think uh, this, is, this will remain after his actions, is that he, this case was used for political purposes, and we have a very recent situation a couple of days ago when he, I uh, he heard a lot of uh, news about that. Uh, two days ago, I, when I looked to the, uh, the U.S. elections, some uh, uh, guys from Romania, from some journalists said, hey, after, uh, we are very proud that after the Dracula we have Guccifer to be proud of. I don't know. If this, this, this is something we should be proud of, uh, yeah, there, are a lot of, there, there, there were a lot of rumors about that. That uh, it was something like a legend. Romanian hacker found that in jail cell. This was this isn't true, but he they used this information to create a sp special uh, atmosphere uh, around this case. Uh, I even now to, to to tell you a joke. I even uh, heard. Uh, um, a joke about uh, Guccifer, and it's very, very recent. It said like uh, two days ago, Mr. Trump received, went to sleep, and after four hours, he received a call, and uh, hey, hello, hey, I'm Guccifer, Mr. Trump. I just, I, di I didn't call you to tell you that, uh, to ask you to, f to uh, thank me that I made you president. I only f uh, phoned you to, to, to discuss about the extraterrestrial technology that you Americans buy from some aliens. Oh, how, how the heck do you know that? I, I, I just heard about that three hours ago. How do you know about that? Yeah, because I just want to tell you that these hackers, these aliens, uh, are not uh, so very, uh, they're not very intelligent. They are Chinese because I hacked their account. So, yeah, there are a lot of jokes, legends about it. And with such a small uh, knowledge, technical knowledge, only, only human psychology. Best practices practices to protect your PII. I have some of them, but I, I think you there are many, many others. Be suspicious. Be suspicious every time when you you hear something about these kind of things. Stay a couple of minutes and think to yourself, hey, is it is it worth it? Is it it, it is it, it could be true what what uh, what offer I received. Um, I remember when I worked in police, uh, a guy came to me and he was very very happy and he asked me to help him to 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 gain one million dollars because he received an email that he inherited one million dollars for I don't know I don't know what old aunt. And when I tried to explain him. He, he didn't want to understand and accused me, and he even accused me that I want to, to steal his money. Yeah, so be suspicious and stick to your guns. If you, if you get a feeling that someone is fishing or in, for information, trust your instincts. This is, this, I, I think this is to our human, human nature to protect ourselves. Pay attention to websites, URLs, verify or request authenticity, and many, many others. For for a company, I read a, a very, very interesting article about how to protect your your uh, company against this. And it, it was a, a, a layered defense against social engineering. And I think most of you who already worked in a company knows know most of these layers, foundation level, security policy, and I think you're 
used with all this policy we should sign every year and that we are trained, we were security awareness training for all users. Also from my uh, actual experience, resistance, resistance training for key personnel, personnel that I've, I've seen that is very efficient to, to target one one VIP person from your from your environment, then send 1,000 emails, and if you have, if you can persuade that person to give you access, then it's very easy from them, from there. Ongoing reminders, yeah, just not forget about that. And gotcha level, that means all the security appliance appliances we have, uh, traps, you know, uh, email defenders like Proofpoint, I don't know. And endpoint devices and endpoint uh, protections. And questions without an answer. I don't know if we will ever have answer to this question. Will we, will we ever be safe enough against social engineering? I don't know because the human nature is to, is very very. Uh, unexpected and you don't know how people react and I think there are a lot of situations that we we didn't know about because they weren't uh, uh, been invented yet other methods so this risk I think will have, will persist and I don't know also if uh, technology or artificial intelligence will entirely replace the human factor we'll see they try that it, we are in progress and will this fight against social engineering ever stop as long as we have social engineering and we will we'll be vulnerable to social engineering there will be always be there will always be a fight against that and that was pretty much all i had for you if you have questions i'm eager to add, to, to ask <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, his question was how uh, was Guccifer or Miglita Zmo because the same person was caught. Uh, he made, as I said, uh, he made some mistakes in uh, his act in his uh, in his uh, activities. For example, he, he used proxies, and uh, but he also accessed his personal Facebook account with the same email proxy as as the victim's account. Yeah. And many, many others, which I can tell right now. Yeah, there are a lot of methods. <laughs> this is one, one, one of the methods. Uh, his question was, we, we f I know a percentage of how many key personnel were uh, were convinced it's very hard to to estimate that but i know from my uh, actual experience and previous experience that there were a lot of cases and it's very very hard to to believe that because you think that if someone uh, reach a, high, a certain level in a company and it's a, i don't know a sysadmin or something you would say is a very very uh, advised person. It is impossible to trick him to 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 give to give you some some things. But uh, I know a recent case <laughs> where uh, in my uh, uh, company where a very very important person gave all the that all the uh, contact address of the employ employers. So it's 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 very recent. It's a couple of days ago. So. So it's uh, I, I don't I don't have a, percent, a percentage about that because you know it's very hard to estimate. It happens, yeah, and it happens even even today, I think. Sure. Uh, I think this this uh, his question was: it's a legal uh, legal way to. To link these uh, two uh, situation, pen testing and social engineering, but I think that social engineering is a part of pen testing. I, it's very hard, or it's the first step, I, I would say, in the pen pen testing. 
because if you are a pen tester or in uh, and you are a white pen tester and you were, were paid for that uh, it depends the contract you, you signed if it's a black box test or a white white one so but if it's a black box which is the most efficient uh, pen testing uh, I think you uh, social engineering is a part of the pen testing so you don't have to uh, to receive some extra money for that if you receive money for a pen tester you will you will do social engineering uh, too so they, they are merged one one to each other this would be my answer Not only a Facebook account, you, you mean a, a without being public. It, the, the answer in this situation is very complex. You know, you could, as I said, you, if you know that person, you can trick him in some other ways, not on the internet. In some other ways, to give him to give him his email address, to to know his email address. For example, you pretend that you promote. Uh, I don't know if you know that he he smoke, he smokes. You promote a, a, a smokes campaign, and hey, do you want this cigarette packet? Okay, do you want to receive any adv advertisement? Advertises about this uh, is my product. Hey, fill this uh, uh, this piece of paper and give, and you, know, you only ask him for name and email address. I don't know, it's just one method that came to my mind right now. But also, social engineering is so, so widespread and so uh, uh, complicated and there are, have, it has a lot of ways to do it that it, you don't have a correct, 100 correct answer for it. Hey. Hey. So I've uh, seen in your slide that you mentioned Lucifer 2.0. Yeah. Okay. So um, do you think this guy uh, actually is a hero right now, and uh, behind him he formed um, a group like Anonymous? And uh, because Lucifer 2.0 hacked uh, all Clinton's email account and other yeah. stuff, and As um, I said, it's a it's a blog about it. If you guys didn't know. As I said, there were a lot of legends. Uh, for, for Guccifer, and that one of them was the Guccifer 2.0 is the same guy with the first Guccifer case I also presented to you. No, there are two different groups, Groups. this Guccifer and another group who call himself Guccifer 2.0, and th this group was the one who was very widespread this, uh, these days, but it's not the same guy. Yeah, he, they used, they used uh, his reputation and his name only to promote themselves. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.